everywhere in the world, at any point, you can use your ship and go in the water, you can swim, dive, you can go on land, come back. It's always there, it's always on the map. The game is called Odyssey, and of course, we're, we're, we're modeling ourselves on, on the, uh, the voyage of Odysseus, and you're exploring the Aegean Sea. It doesn't take place at the same time, but it's the same experience that we're trying to give to the player. And Naval is a huge, important part of that. Also, the map is huge, I mean, really big. The sea needs to be seamless, because this time, it's open everywhere around you. So we had to do a lot of tech on that, making sure that the shorelines where you could see like the waves coming and, and dying on the beaches. You have a lot of uh, big waves uh, when you go far away in the ocean. We also make sure that you see all the, those kind of fishes and stuff like that, that you can see from your ship and when you're, you're swimming. The naval combat in Odyssey is something more fast paced, more close range. It's more intense than, uh, than ever. The fact that we uh, have uh, people shooting javelins and arrows make us uh, put the ship closer together so you can see the action. What we discovered in the end was that mobility was a key factor of making a fun experience for the player. So in fact, the boat has a, has a very high acceleration. You're able to turn really fast, you're able to move really fast. You may see a boat about to ram you, and then like within a couple seconds you can sort of dodge out of the way because of the mobility of the ship. Some ships were shooting uh, fire and ammunition to burn the other ship. The most important tactic was the, the ramming and the cleaving. Yeah, and of course cleaving a ship is advantageous to the player because it's going to give him more life, more resources. So you're always looking for that opportunity to cleave a ship, not only for the spectacular nature of it, but also it's as a gameplay, it, it benefits the player. Uh, during those times, the ship uh, was able to board and uh, kill the remaining uh, crew. And after that, loot the treasure on the ship because there's a bunch of chests. The bigger the ship is, the bigger the rewards are. So every time you sunk a ship, in fact, there is like chests that are being released in the ocean. You can dive and try to hunt them. It's pretty interesting. And if you go too far in the water, you might encounter some sharks or so, so it's pretty <laughs> hard to kill. There's definitely going to be some unique ships on the water, some unique challenges. When you first encounter these ships, if you're a low level, you're going to learn to run away quickly. As you get stronger, your ship is going to get stronger. But beyond that, there's upgrades that you're going to need to apply to your ship. So upgrading the arrows, the javelins, how much ramming damage it can do, how many uh, lieutenants you can have on the ship, how strong the hull is, if you can shoot fire with your arrows or javelins. So there's a lot of upgrades to the ship that will make it more powerful. Well, mercenaries will come after you on sea, and it's a cool moment because they have uh, awesome looking ships, they have unique figureheads, unique masks. When the player gets into combat with these guys, you could also uh, board them. And so you can fight the mercenary like hand to hand on the deck of his ship and hopefully you can even Sparta kick him off the deck. And this is like a, a way cooler moment to take out, take out a mercenary in the game. They can also uh, customize the ship how they want in terms of uh, who they want to recruit and the perks they will want to have on the ship. So to create a synergy between upgrades and perks to build the way they want to play. You can recruit lieutenants from people in the world, be they an uh, individual weak archer, or if you want to find the best mercenary in the world, you can go knock that person out, pay them, convince I them to join this. your crew. I want you to be with me when I do. They can be coming from missions, or they can, you can also choose to find ones that have like good perks. They're going to give you more weapons, they're going to give you better armors, they're going to give also like crazy perks on your ship, like uh, boosting speed and having more stamina. So they're changing almost every kind of part of your boat, in fact. So every one of them is very different. And then when you buy a certain ability, you can call them into combat for you. You can either create a distraction or you can go join them in the fight. Their destiny. So the, the sea shanties, we have a couple at the beginning of the game that are available. And uh, the more you progress in the game, you will unlock some sea shanties that will be about your uh, Odyssey.
So you're born in Sparta, your player character is born in Sparta, but you move out of Sparta at an early age. So your combat style is not a true Spartan phalanx with the shield and the spear. You're fighting on your own. You're fighting for your money. You're fighting for your life all the time. So your combat is very active, very dynamic. So that meant that we wanted to give them these awesome abilities, these brand new 30 plus uh, amazing abilities that can all be upgraded. And then you're going to choose of those 30 abilities, where do you want them? What power do you want them to be? And how are you gonna mix and match them in combat? So the base combat is based on Assassin's Creed Origins. It's the same sort of uh, hitbox based distance timing. But then we've added all the abilities. We focused on mobility. You're much more active and dynamic, uh, dodging and parrying instead of sort of turtling with a shield. Without the shield doesn't mean that you don't have the defensive option, actually. We have the uh, parry that is fairly generous. Compared to a block, what it does is it's creating you an opportunity to take back on the offense. If you want to sneak around, put the hood on, you know, it can hide in the bushes and, you know, lure people in and use uh, some of the abilities that are stealth, you can do that a lot more than we've done since Syndicate. Because of your DNA, because of the spear being an artifact of the first civilization, you combine those two things and you get uh, just really, really impressive game-changing abilities for range, for shooting your bow, uh, for the melee combat, and then for assassination as well. You have to build up adrenaline, energy, for the spear to use that and, and unleash these abilities. So you have to use your base combat to build up the uh, adrenaline and then you unleash uh, spear abilities. So regardless of how you choose to map the abilities, which weapon you want to wield, you will always have a strong aesthetic that true for a Greek hero warrior. We have two weapon slots, the bow, you have uh, five gear slots on your character. All of those can be upgraded at the blacksmith to your current level. You're the only character in, in ancient Greece that has a, a first civilization artifact, but there are mercenaries, there are very strong enemies with the Spartans and the Athenians that you're gonna face that will challenge you constantly. And with the RPG progression, you're going to be facing against enemies that have a higher level than you. It's really gonna be up to you how you play. With Assassin's Creed going into like a fully fledged open world RPG, we knew that choice was the next logical step for us. We were like, hey, choice is our thing. It's the philosophy that, that's flowing through all of the, the creation of the game and that extends to being able to choose your character. It extends to naval and how you're going to customize your ship, how you're going to play with your ship, who you're going to recruit for your ship, and then you can make a choice about the way you're going to approach quests. It had to be everywhere or nowhere at all in terms of <laughs> how we were looking at making things. So yes, the narrative will lead to uh, different uh, conclusions, but you, if you go off the beaten path, you will be surprised and you will have to make choices, sometimes dire, sometimes not. So uh, yes, we want to give that autonomy to the player. You can choose if you're going to help the Athenians dominate the Greek world or the Spartans, and you can change your choice in that playthrough as well. We wanted to approach the combat in a way that gave the player more options, more customization, more ability to have choice in the way that they approach uh, every combat situation. So that meant that we wanted to give them these awesome abilities, these brand new 30 plus uh, amazing abilities that can all be upgraded. If I want to shoot people with uh, bow and arrows and specialize in that, you can do it. If you feel that it's more like melee fighting, you can do it as well. And if you feel that uh, it's a little bit more stealth that I would like to do and, you know, get the drop on them, that's all available for you as well, so. Very poetic for someone covered in blood. I like it. The romancing, we, we have a handful of characters that we can romance. They don't necessarily intertwine with the bigger picture, so they, they're much more regional content stories or, you know, a little bit more for fun. When we set out to make the story in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we knew that we were going to have multiple endings. Now, for us, it meant making a series of choices through a 
a series of quests that would impact the ending um, and not just be multiple endings based on one decision you make at the end, which sometimes other games fall prey to. Just because you're making choices doesn't mean that you're going to be cut off from half the game for making these choices. You're simply going to have your own unique experience. Something that I, I really like about our game is the variation of tones. I never thought Poseidon's anger would be too much for the mighty Cassandra's stomach. <laughs> you know, you can be a little bit more of a traditional compassionate hero, but you can also call people on their bullshit in the game. Somebody's coming to you with a much more down-to-earth, easy you know, quest like a uh, somebody stole my vase or something. So your character can say, dude, who do I look like? Like somebody's gonna get, you know, vases, you know, like it's, I'm destroying armies, you know? Well, when the player feels that he can say that, we try to put that in the word of the character as a choice as well. So he's like, dude, the fuck I look like, you know? Like, so, so that you can get that a little bit more in the game. You can't do it every time, but you know, like, how do I feel about saying something here? We try to, to mimic that and then have the characters react. Cassandra, what do you think we should do? Player choice is a motivator. It connects you with what you're doing. The game is talking to me and I need to uh, respond to that. So the player choices are felt in dialogues, but they're also felt in the world. So in uh, the play style that I'm going to uh, choose in the game, uh, the mix and matching of the abilities, who I want to interact with, Sparta, Athens, you know, what do I want to do as a player? You decide and it's your choice to do it.